Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. Normally we start these tutorials by creating a composition, but not today. Today we go to File and select New Maxon Cinema 4D File and it will ask us to name this file and save it. So let's name it something like Kinetic Type and press Save. Now we are inside Cinema 4D Lite. This is a version that comes with After Effects. It's very basic, but very useful. So let's start. The first thing is always to set up our document. So let's go to the render settings and let's make the width and the height 1080 by 1080 pixels. And let's leave the frame rate at 30 frames per second and let's close this window. Now let's start modeling. Go to our pre-made spline menu and let's select the perfect rectangle. Now with our rectangle selected, Let's go to the object properties and let's change the height value to 150. And let's select the rounding checkbox and increase the radius until we have a smooth edge. Cool, with that done, let's return to the right side toolbar and get the extrude tool. Now the extrude tool will appear in the object tab and we must select and drag our spline into it. And magically, our rectangle line has volume now. And that's what we need. Now let's click on the extrude tool and make a few modifications. The first one will be on the offset value. Let's increase it to 250, giving us more space for our texture. And next we'll go to the caps tab and let's uncheck the start and the end cap. So our object is empty inside. Now before we make our topography texture, let's quickly set up an isometric camera. So our object is already in position. So let's go to our camera icon, hold it and select a normal camera. To make it with an isometric view, we just need to change the camera projection. So we will select isometric here. Nothing happened on our screen because we didn't have the camera active. So let's go back to our object panel, select the camera and click on the little square icon. Now with the position, pan and zoom tools, let's move the camera to center our object. If you need some extra help, we can always activate the camera grid. Go to the camera attributes panel one more time select Composition and enable the grid. This grid will definitely help us framing this better. Anyway, let's select and rotate our object so it faces the right way. And great. So now let's create the text texture for this 3D object. We are going to create it very quickly inside After Effects. So let's jump back to After Effects for a few seconds. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a new composition. And let's name it Typography Texture. Let's make it 1080 by 1080 and press OK. The first thing we will do here is to create a background. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid. And let's name it Background or BG. Now let's add some text. Let's select our type tool and write something. Try using a condensed font, like the outward font. Now let's write something. I'm going to use the usual mast.lab. And for the size, we will right click over the text layer, select transform and choose fit to comp. Perfect. Now let's go back to the layer in a timeline and click R for rotation. And let's change the value to minus 90. And let's align our text again. And let's press S for scale and let's reduce the scale value until we have a bit of a black edge around our text. This will help when we need to tile the texture in 3D. And you must be asking yourself why this? The reason is when we import image into Cinema 4D, the material in Cinema 4D kind of rotates the texture and by doing this, we are counter-rotating it. So it will be in the right place when we import it. Hopefully this will make more sense later. Now what's left to do is to export this image. So for that, we go to composition and select save frame as file. Then press render and we can jump back into Cinema 4D. Now in Cinema 4D, we need to create a new material to apply the texture we just made. So let's click on the Material Manager icon to open the Material panel and click on the little plus to add a new material. Now let's click twice in the Material to open the Material Editor and here we will uncheck the Color and the Reflectance channels and let's check the Luminous channel. Now let's click on the Luminous, go to Texture and click on the little triangle to load the image we just designed and press Open Cool, now we can just close our material editor. And on the material tab, we can select our new material and drag it and drop it over our 3D model. At first, it doesn't look right. 
so we need to make a few adjustments. On the Object tab, let's click on our 3D model and click on the little material icon. This will open the material attributes. Now let's start adjusting the texture of our object. Let's go to the Tiles view and change the value to 5. This value will depend on how many tiles of your texture you want, so feel free to use this value or another one. Great, now let's make the texture move. First, let's make sure our timeline little is on frame 0. And on Offset view, let's click on the little diamond shape to mark a keyframe. And let's leave it at 0%. Now let's move our timeline needle to the frame 90, change the frame value to 180, and move the timeline needle to the last frame. So we have more frames for our animation. Then go back to the material tag and go to offset view, and this time let's change the value to 100. And let's mark a keyframe one more time. Now, if we press play, we can see our texture moving. Amazing, right? Now, as you can see, the motion of the texture starts slow and then speeds up, and then slows down at the end of the loop animation. That's because Cinema 4D will always apply an easy and easy curves into our keyframes, automatically. And we actually want them to be in linear mode, so we don't have or see this difference in the speed of our animation. And to make that adjustment, we just need to select our keyframes, and then right-click and select Linear. It's pretty easy, but you know, it's always annoying to have to do this. And now, if you play it again, you can see the animation looks much better in the loop. But don't go away, we are not done yet. As you can see, inside of our object, the texture is facing down. Which is okay, but not great. So let's change that. So let's go back to the Object tab, select the Material tag, and while holding the command or control key, let's drag the tag, duplicating it. Nice, relax, this will make sense. Let's select the first texture tag, and on the side option, let's choose back. And now, let's select the other tag, and let's choose the side option front. This way, each tag will show a side of the textured object. Now, we still have the inside text facing the wrong way. To change that, let's select the material tag that is applied to that side and go to Tiles U and change the value to negative. And it will flip the texture perfectly. That's great, and this is almost it in Cinema 4D. Now let's duplicate our object to make a more detailed composition. So let's select the extrude and while holding Ctrl or Command, let's drag and drop. This will make a new copy for us. Now let's position and rotate this new object in our scene and arrange the layout. And that's pretty much it in Cinema 4D. So let's go to File and select Save and go back to After Effects. Cool, now in After Effects, let's select our Cinema 4D file and drag it to the Composition window to make a new composition. Now we can see our 3D model inside After Effects, which is great, this is what we wanted. So now let's go to the Sceneware effect and on the render settings, let's change the renderer to Current to see the full render quality. Now if you press the spacebar on numpad 0 to preview it, you can see our animation is looping perfectly. And that's amazing, right? And we are 95% finished. But before we render this motion piece, let's go back to layer and select new solid. And let's name it BG. Let's make it comp size and make the color black. And let's move it under the Cinema 4D layer and it's done. But before we go, Let's go back to layer again, let's make new and select adjustment layer. And on this layer we are going to apply a tint effect. So with the layer selected, let's go to effect, color correction and tint. And let's go to the effect tab. Here we can change the black and white colors which will apply to our graphic. Making it much easier for us to customize the colors without creating a new texture and going back to Cinema 4D. And yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. Now let's go back to Composition and let's add this composition to the render queue. Let's render it and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Remember to like and to subscribe and please consider supporting this channel with only $1 a month or $10 a year on my Buy Me A Coffee page. I will leave the link in the video description and that's it. Thank you so much again. Have a good day, a good life and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.